This is what you see when you first launch the software for the first time. You can move windows around however you like by dragging and dropping them. Later when you exit the program, it will save your window setup until the next time you change things. By doing a left click on some of the windows, you have other options and can resize things, move things around however you like. As with all Mac applications, you can make it completely full screen, upper right hand corner here. All of your files are accessed through this favorites window. You can navigate to some particular place and make any folder your favorites. For example, this example, I'll right click, say add to favorites, and now anytime I come in, we'll see the favorites listed. I can open any one of these files in a text editor and look at it. For example, do a right click open and we'll see the XML file which can be manually edited. When you simply double click on a file name, then the file opens and it can be edited using a lot of the other tools that you'll see later. One of the first things you'll want to do is create a new file. So select the directory, right click, say new from the templates, look for corn template.xml, give it a name, and you'll see a simple shape in the outline editor window. The outline editor window is uh, got a black background. Uh, the inside of the shape is this purple magenta color. The outside of the shape is sort of the brown or orange color. You can change the thickness of the shape. For example, make it larger or smaller. So let's take a look at some of the other areas. Uh, the favorites window is where you uh, manipulate files. The view 3D is where you look at the shape and can roll it around and look at it from different perspectives. The data navigator window allows you to edit any information relative to your design. The outline editor window is uh, lets you determine the shape and identify where the cut points go. Down below the outline editor window is information about the cutter the curve resolution, uh, the thickness of the shape, etc. To the right is a palette of various kinds of cut points we can add. And also this uh, property windows, anything that's highlighted in the data navigator can be edited in the properties window. Now, before we clear this uh, shape and draw something else, it's important to know whether you're drawing the outline uh, by specifying points on the inside curve or the outside curve. And that depends on where your cutter is located. If your cutter is located on the inside, you'll be digitizing points on the inside of the curve. If your cutter is located on the outside, then your points uh, as you enter them will be representing the outside shape. So let's um, select the cutter on the front of the bowl on the outside and let's clear everything under outline, clear all. And now I simply double click points and every point I enter will be an outline, um, a point that's curve fit for the outside of the shape. In our 3D view window, we'll want to select the outside of the shape or the inside of the shape. We can always view either the inside or outside uh, but you have to select which one it is. Now you notice is as we drag points around, we see the result in the 3D shape immediately, and we can scroll around and look at this. So there you have a simple shape with uh, where I've digitized the outside shape. The white line represents where the center of the cutter will be going. We'll talk about that more later. Now, if instead we wanted to digitize the inside of a shape, let's go back and clear everything and select a cutter that's on the front inside. And now I can make a shallow bowl. And again, uh, I want to show the inside of the shape here. And 
as we draw the uh, uh, double click points, the shape is curve fit to those points and we can see the inside shape of the bowl. Be sure to take a look at the help file. It contains a lot of useful information about uh, how to man uh, manipulate uh, data points, uh, add points, delete points in the outline editor window. Um, in the view 3D portion, it tells you how to pan and zoom and rotate. Uh, so make sure you read through. Okay, now let's go start a new uh, file with a simple bowl, new corn file template, and just say test rosette. And we'll get our shallow bowl, which is the default. We'll just work with that for now. One of the first things we're going to show how to do, drag a rosette point from the palette somewhere onto this white curve. The white curve represents the center of the cutter. In this case, my cutter is a horizontal cutting frame. The radius of the cutter is 0.512 inches. So this white curve is 0.512 inches away from the inside curve. In the 3D window, you see a little black line, which represents um, like uh, a pen chuck if we had a pen mounted in the cutter instead or I could hit the render button and get an actual rendering. I can remove that line and see what the cut looks like. Now this is just a default uh, cut with rocking. If I go over in the data navigator, uh, here I can edit information about that cut point and most importantly, information about that rosette. I can choose multiple different kinds of things, including the full complement of Holtzap full lettered uh, things. So if I go to a flower shaped rosette and have an amplitude of 0.2 inches and uh, five repeats, now you can see what that cut pattern will look like. In the outline editor, I see the yellow dotted line represents the um, movement of the tip of the cutter as it's spinning around. The yellow line represents the cutter when it goes into the work and the green line represents the extent of the cut as it's rocking back and forth. So as I change the amplitude of the rosette, say from 0.2 to 0.1, you'll notice the green doesn't travel as far. If I go back to 0.25, much larger, you can see the green goes back and forth quite a ways. Uh, likewise, if I change the depth of the cut from 0.05 to 0.07, you'll notice all of them are going deeper. Now I can move this cut point and every time I stop dragging it, you can see the result of the cut in the 3D window. In particular, you will often want the center of the cutter to just line up with the center right where my cursor is circling right there. Then if I turn the grid off, you can see that the cut is just barely touching the center of my shape there. I can add additional rosette points by simply double clicking and it will duplicate those cuts. And I can move them around different locations and immediately see the result of what I'm cutting. Now each rosette can be a rocking or a pumping rosette. And we edit that by selecting it in the data navigator window and simply change it from a rocking rosette to a pumping rosette. Now you'll notice that the, um, I need to change the amplitude of that rosette to something smaller. Uh, now the cut goes in and out instead of back and forth. Other options are I can have the cut always going perpendicular to the surface or tangential this, to the surface or both rocking and pumping simultaneously or both, both perpendicular and tangential simultaneously. Okay, that's about all the time we have. For more information, take a look at some of the example files that you downloaded with the software. Thank you. Mm -hmm.